in three parts. One, what you should do in listening time. Um, two, how you should structure the piece as a whole. And three, how to do the actual analysis. So when it comes to listening time, what they're doing is they're giving people a transcript of the piece and then they're letting people listen to the uh, the piece twice. So generally what people have is um, one listen, two minute break, um, second listen, and then like a one to two minute break, and then writing time starts. So it's good to kind of use this time as well as you can, because you only get listening time once, well, twice, but you can't go back and listen to it again once you start the actual writing time like you can with a standard argument analysis. When it comes to the analysis itself, there are a couple of main techniques that you want to be looking out for in the piece. So one is stress or emphasis. This is probably the most obvious one, just whenever someone puts stress on what they're saying. Volume, people getting louder uh, often, but sometimes getting softer as well. Pace or tempo, are they speaking quickly or slowly? Pitch, some people also call this intonation. Generally, this only really applies at the end of sentences. Does it go up or does it go down? Pause. So do they have a break after they say something important? And then tone or voice. This one's really important as well, probably as important as stress or emphasis, because this is the bit where you can get really specific and gather a lot of bonus points for yourself if you can pick out things that other people aren't noticing. There are a couple of other bonus techniques as well that it's good to have up your sleeve. So uh, rhythm. Honestly, I don't bother including it as a main technique anymore because it barely ever turns up. Occasionally, if someone speaks in a particularly staccato way, that can help show emphasis or like a sense of rigidity or structure can kind of give that to the piece. But otherwise, I wouldn't bother mentioning it. The thing is background noise or sound effects. So for example, like an audience reaction, laughter, silence, something like that. Um, and also sometimes people occasionally get educational videos or videos that have been quite highly edited. So talking about the diegetic versus non-diegetic sound is another thing you can do. But we want to focus on these six main things. So I tend to find in the listening time, I really struggle to think about more than like one thing, honestly, per listen. Um, but because you have only two listens, you can't be only listening out for two techniques the whole time. So I do find generally you can sort of manage three or so at a time. What I would probably do is the first time I listen through to the piece, I would try and listen for three of these techniques. It depends a little bit on the piece. Just go for the three that are sort of the most obvious. Generally, that ends up being stress, uh, pitch and tone. These are probably the most important ones, so it's good to get them out of the way. And then on your second listen, you can listen to whatever you missed the first time. So if you had heaps of this, but you didn't have much about volume, for example, you'd listen to that. You'd also listen out for pace and you'd listen out for pause as well. Another thing that's really good to do on your second listen is look for any visual cues as well. So this is particularly important if you've been given like a newsreel or something and your teachers really want you to pull out visual techniques. Um, if that's the case, there are three or four main things I would analyze. First one is speakers filmed. So if they've got uh, like one person asking questions, a common format is an interviewer and then some kind of interviewee responding, you wanna look at them and their body language, as well as their facial expressions. Another thing you want to look at is when there's a voiceover with other things filmed. So 
I've heard a lot of people do sex this year of newsreels, which usually involves one person asking someone else something about a topic, and then they start talking on it. And as they're elaborating on the points, the camera stops filming them and it starts going through clips of like the thing happening. So a lot about vaping, they show lots of clips of young people vaping or about crime was another one. And while the person was talking, there were lots of clips of different crimes being committed. So that's another thing as well. Really good to analyze both of those. Generally, the effect of this is to show the thing happening in real time. That's worth analyzing as well. Two other things which often turn up and which it's good to mention if you can are special effects or noticeable editing and also graphs images or other visual aids. Often these are paired with statistics. So it's good to analyze how those work in conjunction. So this is how I would split up my listening time. I would listen to these things first and I would listen to these things second. And that's when I would also pull out maybe two or three visual elements as well. In my two minute break here, I would mostly be consolidating notes I took from the first listen and I would also look through and try and consider what are some key general written techniques that it might be worth analyzing as well. In the one to two minute break here you just want to jot down anything that you remember from the second time but that you didn't have time to write. And then also start analyzing the written techniques. Okay, so hopefully once you've gone through your two listens, if you followed this process, you should have all the audiovisual techniques you need. So the next thing you have to do is work out the structure, how you should actually write your piece. Ideally, you want to go into the sack already knowing how you're going to structure it. Generally, this differs by school. I know of two schools that got their students to write an entire argument analysis. So they gave them 60 minutes, they made them write an introduction, three bodies and a conclusion. And the piece they had to listen to was sort of four to six minutes long. It was like a standard sort of one and a half page piece, which they had to analyze. So um, you might get that. So if you do get the full 60 minutes, I would recommend intro, three body paragraphs and a conclusion. However, the absolute majority of school, probably 80%, have gotten their students to write only one body paragraph. And um, sometimes the intro is optional. So like some schools want an intro, other schools don't. Most schools want at least one body paragraph, however. So if this is the case, you've probably only been given 15 or 20 minutes writing time, but that's all you should really need because that's what you have per body paragraph for a 60 minute piece anyway. So I would be aiming just to stick to like standard 15 to 20 minutes for a body paragraph. Okay, any questions? Audiovisual analysis, we went over most of how I would analyze these different techniques already. So I might just paste in the notes for those, but I won't go over it in detail. Basically, all of them do the same thing, which is to add emphasis to what the author or the speaker is saying. So most of these things, people only put stress or emphasis on the most important parts of their speech and the things that they want people to remember anyway. So you won't put stress on random words like conjunctions, for example, um, unless you're using lots of conjunctions to make a point about the magnitude of an issue and all the different things, for example, that are affected. By and large, you'd increase your volume when you're going through, when you're going over something that's got like a lot of emotional appeal, you would add stress to something like a statistic. You would also speed up if you want to add a sense of passion to your piece as well. One thing where the analysis does kind of change a little bit is pitch or intonation. So I only analyze this at the end of sentences. So if someone's asking a question, their pitch goes up at the end, and I would analyze that as them genuinely trying to engage with the audience, get a response, get people to actually think about it. On the other hand, and there was a really good audiovisual 
practice that he did with a couple of people a few weeks ago. Um, this lady asked a series of two rhetorical questions. And the first one, her pitch went up at the end because she was genuinely trying to get her audience to think about it. But then in her second rhetorical question, her pitch actually went down. And the reason why was she wasn't actually asking a rhetorical question. She, she was answering her previous question with what the solution should be. So that was something that you would not get from the written piece alone, but which the audio really added to the experience. So I would think about this particularly with questions and also if you're running out of things to say, generally at the end of a body paragraph, the pitch drops down. So it gives, you can just talk about how they're trying to add certainty or seriousness to their point. So that's a good one to keep in your back pocket. Pause often follows shocking, to, shocking statistics, any attempts to add drama, anything like that. So that's all the key techniques. Um, what we will go over in a little bit more detail, however, is the actual structure that you should be using for your body paragraphs, which I'll paste in here. So actually be doing this analysis. What you want is a standard body paragraph structure to start for argument analysis. So a topic sentence, which is focused on the main argument of the part, maybe a short contextualizing sentence, adding a little bit of context. What are we talking about? If you're doing just a one paragraph sack, you might want your topic sentence not to be what is the main argument of this part, but just what is the contention generally. And then for the analysis, we're going to modify what we usually do. So instead of just doing device quote and then audience effect, we're also going to add what is the audio technique? How does it amplify what they're saying? And what is the effect of that amplification? So how does it add to what we have? The reason why we've included both of these is because you want to be talking about how audio techniques work in conjunction with the words that they are said over. So that's what you want to keep in mind. How do these things amplify each other or work together? Because as I said, none of these things really work in a vacuum. Like stress isn't going to have any effect unless it's being said over something that's persuasive anyway case um do you guys want to see an example or are you happy to of examples here um these ones in the doc follow a slightly more basic structure which is i can't think of anything better than t-a-e-a -A, which is honestly kind of awful but it stands for technique amplify effect audience and it's just a slightly shorter version of this like this part without the device quote audience bit. So what's the technique or what's the audio technique? What does it amplify in the text? What are the words it amplifies? What's the effect of that? And then how does it change the thoughts or feelings of the audience regarding the author, the opposition or the topic? So the speakers stress on the word fantastic when describing this new payment system helps to draw attention to her enthusiasm for the system and effect on the audience leads the audience to view the change as a beneficial thing. Same thing for volume, same thing for pitch. I'll give you an example of how this would look with the device quote audience effect bit. So for this, um, we want to start with a topic sentence. So and I'll, I'll give you an example for this uh, Olympics piece that we will go over in a second or that you can do as a practice sack if you want. You might say the author begins by arguing that the 2024 Olympics have the best so far for gender equality piece. You'd want to look for a couple of examples of, say, stress or volume change. So I'll give you some that you could maybe use. Likely, if someone was speaking, they would put stress on statistics put stress here and there's an increase in volume here. 
How would you analyze each of these things? When you're going through, you want to look at what you have highlighted from your listening time, and you want to pick written techniques like rhetorical questions and so on that have an overlap ideally with an audio or a visual technique because you want to talk as much as possible about the conjunction between the two so for example for our piece um, let's just copy this and pop it here we would say they begin statistic here so we're going to analyze first the technique. So they open with a statistic, just 2.2% of early Olympic athletes were women. So we've got our statistic that's our technique. Got our quote. Put that in orange. And then we need to add our effect. We will do that as well. All right. What is the few main effects of a statistic? One is the shock value of it. Try to surprise people, teach them something new. The second one is the credibility that it adds to the author. So they open with a statistic that just 2.2% of early Olympic athletes were women. This statistic and to show the extent of the author's research on the topic, thus positioning her as a reliable commentator on quality in the Olympics. Okay, and note we don't say on the issue, we say specifically what it is. Okay, so the effect here is positioning the author talk smart. So now we've done our device quote and effect. So now we need to do the audio component of this. And this is why it's important to pick written techniques which also have audio on top of them because you need to be able to pair them as much as possible. Otherwise, you're just going to run out of things to say. You won't have enough to deal with. Like you won't be able to get through enough audio techniques unless it's all paired with written stuff. So this statistic is designed to show the extent of the author's research on the topic, thus positioning her as a reliable commentator on gender equality in the Olympics. Okay, so now we'll add the technique, which is emphasis. Her emphasis when speaking these words, and obviously we haven't actually listened to her speak, but just imagine for the sake of the argument. Her emphasis when speaking these words helps to write. Um, and then we actually don't need to say what we're amplifying again because it's already quoted above and we're clearly referencing it. So we just need to jump to the effect. So what is the effect of saying just 2.2%? Two, just 2 What's the effect of saying that with extra stress? We would say her emphasis when speaking these words helps to amplify the audience's uh, shock, cutting through to emphasize just how small these numbers really are. And then if you wanted, you could add something a little bit more specific or extensive about how this positions the Olympics more generally. Okay, 